So here in the module five, we're going to learn about the Pisces, the general characters of the Pisces, along with the classification, the general characters of the Pisces, which we are going. Let's start. Superclass Nathostomata. We are beginning any time we are completed with Cyclostomata. Superclass Nathostomata. Nathos means jaws. Stoma, stoma, stoma. The word always means mouth. Jawed vertebrates, we can say. These are jawed vertebrates. Contain jaws. Even we have jaws. That means we are belongs to Nathostomata. They possess paid appendages. Pectoral and uh, pelvic fins. To say a fish, what are required? Paid appendages are present. Paid appendages. That makes the uh, earlier land cyclostomata and uh, that uh, in case of cephalocardata, amphiactus, even they look like fish. We can't say them as fishes because of the absence of this particular pectoral fins and pelvic fin. These are pectoral fin and these are pelvic fin. So, but due to the absence of the paid appendages only, we said it out. So, pectoral fin and pelvic fin is a characteristic feature of that uh, the fishes, we can say. So, uh, in case of remaining amphibia, reptilia, aves and mammals, we can see four limbs and hind limbs. That's why we called it as tetrapoda. Amphibia, reptilia, aves, mammals are called as tetrapods. So that means in nathostomata either they should have the paid fins or that uh, four, uh, four limbs and uh, hen limbs. Pectoral fin and pelvic fin. Okay, so here I am. Pectoral and pelvic. Paid, pectoral and pelvic. Internal ears with three semicircular canals. If you remember in case of cyclostomata we said only one or two semicircular canals. You say individually, mixin is having only one, and uh, the petromyjan is having two semicircular canals. Now, in fishes, three semicircular canals are present in the internal ear. Now, let's start the superclass Pisces. The Pisces, Pisces means fish. Here, these are the, the first jawed vertebrates. First, the word first is very important in this particular area. That means when it comes to the amphibia, we use it to say sternum appeared for the first time. Likewise, in every class, we'll have some first features like that. So, just list out all that first when it comes, when you're reading in the text itself, that list out all that first. You're going to get a map the following. Okay, so first jawed vertebrates, these are completely aquatic. Fishes are completely aquatic. We know very well that fishes uh, are aquatic, only available in the water. Pressure marine, wherever. Gill breathing animal. The respiratory organs are gills. We say gill breathing animals. The extinct jawless fishes, the astracoderms, then gave rise to the earliest uh, jawed fishes during the Silurian period. If you remember, in Aneta, we said the Astracoda, the extinct jawless species, that means Aneta, Astracodermi, I said it over. That Astracoderms believed to be gave rise to the earliest jawed species during Silurian period. During Silurian period, these particular fishes are appeared, appeared and originated, believed to be originated from Astracoderm. Okay, so that ancestors of the fishes, we have to say that astrocodum. Devonian period is considered as the golden age of fishes. Okay, as I said to you, geological time scale from the, till the time, from the origin of earth, it was taken 5 billion years. So, that till 2 billion years, we don't have life on the earth. So, this total time is classified into eons, eras, epochs, periods. So these periods will come over uh, continuously for us. The details of the geological time scale will discuss in organic evolution. That uh, in uh, these particular classes we are going to say that when they get originated and when they are much flourished over. Golden age, what I mean, they are completely uh, they're occupied and distributed well all over the world. We call it as golden age. For the fishes, Devonian period is said to be the golden age of fishes. You have to understand this in the form of origin. When the fishes are originated, 
that no more amphibian reptiles apes and mammals mammals means human also there belongs to mammals okay so that uh, in the geological time scale fishes are appeared when it comes here uh, from the beginning if you say unicellular organisms are appeared for the first time just for information we are talking you in organic evolution chapter we'll discuss all of them in detail then after amphibians are appeared okay so that means before they appear the fishes occupied the maximum habitat that's why we call them as golden age of fishes then after amphibians are appeared then after reptiles are appeared okay amphibians also they have some period of time which we say golden age that we'll discuss in uh, when we go to the amphibian carboniferous period we used to say so in the same way reptiles mesozoic era so then apes and mammals are appeared from the reptiles apes and mammals are appeared so that after the appearance of these fishes are also present but when we come to the geological time scale that uh, first uh, in the particular appearance first of all we have to see the fishes fishes are appeared for the first time talking about vertebrates the jawed vertebrates the first jawed vertebrates are going to be fishes okay devonian period is the golden age of fishes the fishes emerged as predominant group during the devonian period they occupied at present human is the predominant one isn't it or not human is occupying that uh, psychozoic era this era is called human era is called psychozoic era by number we are not occupying actually by number our uh, more than that uh, insects are more than isn't it for one human being in hyderabad itself we have 50 mosquitoes by number we are not having golden age by uh, that uh, intelligence we are ruling the total world we are breaking the world and we are destroying the world that we have separate chapters pollution environmental issues biodiversity likewise but at present golden age is human being present uh, that at the time devonian period that golden age is going to be belongs to the fishes when human is not appeared we are talking about so that's what we said fishes are emerged as a predominant group during the devonian period then study of fishes study of fishes known as ichthyology study of fishes known as ichthyology so that's it various fishes fishes constitute most diverse and largest vertebrate group it is so they are one of the economically most important animal groups to mankind economically important what i mean the most, most people likely to eat the fishes that we have fish culture we call aquaculture even extant lobe finned fishes extant live at present they are present are coelacanth latimeria chalumne we use it to see and dipnoi fishes which we call lung fishes dipnoi fishes as well. lung fishes very interesting these the dipnoi fishes are lung fishes extant lobe finned fishes telecant fishes and uh, dipnoi fishes the bulk of living fishes at present sharks rays ray finned fishes likewise shark showing the sharks to you ray finned fishes based on the fin we are talking about ray fin that means their fins will be like this that on the body the fins will be like this ray finned fishes we say lobe finned uh, that i say i just shown to earlier to you lobe finned fishes are very few okay that means their fin will be like this you can't see this kind of uh, dipnoi fishes here silacanth is very rare silacanth is very rare near the chalumne river where it combine with the ocean that uh, miss portney latima is uh, uh, identified this particular uh, fish actually silacan we have a great history for this particular fish and uh, dipnoi even uh, we can say this is discontinuous in distribution what is discontinuous distribution not present all over the world we can say discontinuous distribution for example if you are known example i'll go if you take a bird kiwi where it is seen immediately Uh, people will answer i think so kiwi those who are having little interest in cricket even they can uh, they answer immediately whom we call kiwis
Nobody is answering. New Zealand. Very good. New Zealand. New Zealand. That means Kiwi board belongs to New Zealand. That means we can say Kiwi is showing discontinuous distribution. If I ask you, kangaroo, a mammal, then uh, kangaroo. Australia. Yeah, that means kangaroo. Do is it available? Have you seen anywhere in Hyderabad? No, sir. No. That only in Australia. Only in Australia. That we call discontinuous distribution. Okay. So that means discontinuous distribution. For example, crow. If you take crow, crow we can see everywhere. Cosmopolitan in distribution, we can say. Worldwide in distribution. Cockroach is worldwide in distribution. So that the um, worldwide, if it is distributed, we say cosmopolitan. The word we use is cosmopolitan in distribution. If only restricted to some particular area is Discontinuous distribution. Only three uh, genera are available: Protopterus, Neoceratodus, and Lepidosiren. Just for information, we are going. Protopterus is there in Africa. Lepidosiren is there in South America. Neoceratodus belongs to Australia. Only that a particular genera in particular area. That's all. There no way in the world you'll find Dipnae fishes. And Silacanth is very very rare. That means actually it is thought to be extincted before. But uh, in East Coast Africa, in that uh, near Lat uh, Chalumne River, Miss Courtney Latimer, Courtney, sign that Latimer on the base of scientist name, that scientific name is given. Latimeria Chalumne, the Silicon. Okay, so that's the story of them. These are having low fin fishes, low fin. All the available fishes, that means on market and, uh, and in aquariums, whatever you see, they are all ray fin fishes, we can say. They are all said to me, ray fin fishes. That I'll show that ray fin sharks, rays, uh, and uh, ray fin fishes. We can say sharks are marine water, you don't see them in general other than in movies. The higher group of vertebrates that are next to the Pisces are amphibians. After the Pisces, amphibians are there. So, amphibians, which are thought to be evolved from osteolipid fishes. Amphibians are thought to be evolved from osteolipid fishes. Okay. Osteolipid, nothing but our silicon fish. General characters of fishes we are talking about. They are completely aquatic. Poikilothermic animals. Poikilothermic animals. What is poikilothermic animal? Animals whose body temperature changes according to the atmospheric temperature, we say poikilothermic or cold-blooded vertebrates. And I think I can ask this question. Fishes are poikilothermic along with the Pisces or fishes. Pisces. Reptiles, uh, and reptiles and amphibians. Amphibians. Reptiles and amphibians. Yeah. Reptiles and along amphibians. with the amphibia and reptilia. Very good. They are poikilothermic animals along with the amphibia and reptilia. Along with the amphibia and reptilia, they are that uh, poikilothermic animals. Very good. Next, they are streamlined body. This is the answer we got. We asked a question. What is the similarity during locomotion in birds and fishes? Both birds and fishes are having streamlined body. Streamlined body to avoid the resistance again at the water current. Okay, so that means if the organism is present like this, it, it, it gets more resistance. So that's why that uh, bird or a fish, a fish is having a streamlined body. That means less it pays the resistance because of streamlined. In the same way, the birds are also while flying in the air, they should have the streamlined body. So streamlined body that helpful to swim in the water easy. Body is divisible into head, trunk and tail. Fish body is divisible into head, trunk and tail. Head, trunk, tail. Next, exoskeleton. Need to talk about the exoskeleton. We know that fishes are having scales. The mesodermal scales are in some bony plates are present. Very few are scaleless. Endoskeleton. Endoskeleton is cartilaginous or bony. Based on that, we classified 
chondritis cartilaginous fissure astigmatic bony fissures the skull is monocondylic skull is monocondylic so now i have to talk about that particular monocondylic nature that uh, uh, there is a bone called occipital bone i am talking about the human being that means it's better to me to show you in human being i think you understand my creativity i am showing the back of the head reason okay so here the box i shown here that particular area is occipital bone okay so occipital bone from the occipital bone if two protrusions comes which is going to be fixed in the vertebral column if two protrusions comes that what do you say dicondylic okay or else if only one will come that we call monocondylic okay so definition wise we can say like this if one occipital condyle occipital condyle small protrusion from the occipital bone that we can say occipital condyle if one is present monocondylic if two are present dicondylic okay so that's the thing next vertebral column we know the vertebral column is the unique feature of vertebrates so these are the vertebrates vertebral vertebrae of the vertebral column okay so each vertebrae is having so many portions centrum pre jig apophysis post jig apophysis metapophysis hypophysis transverse process there are so many are present but the major thing is centrum so that's why we are showing centrum of vertebrae this is a centrum that each vertebrae is having every uh, vertebral uh, vertebrae of the vertebral column is having so many portions the major major portion is centrum so say that centrum is concave at both anterior and posterior face faces concave at anterior and posterior faces we can say amphicelar more will come here in the next amphib also i'll make i'll give some small small notes i'll send a small pdf notes for you that all all these definitions skull is monocondylic skull is dicondylic vertebrae are amphicelar in amphibia procelus and opisthocelus also you can see likewise with all these definitions skeletal elements is going to be little bit confusing and the coming classes i'll show the visuals also but to be remembered skull is monocondylic vertebrae are amphicelar likewise that amphicelar centrum is concave the bone main bone of the vertebral column we can say centrum is concave at both sides only concave at anterior side we say procelus only concave at posterior side we call opisthocelus concavity is there on both sides we say that amphicelar ours is so different ours is amphiplatia acelus we'll discuss when we move on so just to be remembered two things here that skull is that monocondylic skull and vertebrae are amphicelar moving on towards the locomotion by unpaired median and caudal fins are unpaired along with paired and uh, pectoral and pelvic fin a general fish i'll show you here so these are paired fin pectoral fin pelvic fin then these are paired fins okay unpaired fin who are the median fin sometimes ventral fin also present caudal fin this is caudal fin median fin and caudal fin these are called unpaired fin these two are called unpaired okay so un median and caudal these are called the uh, paired pectoral and uh, pelvic fin locomotion occurs with the fins okay so that's it pectoral and pelvic fin pectoral and pelvic fin and uh, that this is the caudal fin showing that pectoral fin and uh, pelvic fin and uh, median fins you can see median fin let me show you the median fins that uh, ventral fin and caudal fin fish to fish it is going to be little difference will have but common is pectoral and pelvic fins mouth is ventral or mouth is terminal mouth is ventral okay mouth is ventral or terminal this is terminal one i am showing if you see the shark fishes that uh, mouth is ventral side okay the cartilaginous fishes are having ventral mouth and uh, the bony fishes 
are having terminal mouth. That's the story of mouth. Next, the teeth. Acrodont. Teeth are said to be homeodont or the homodont. So teeth are homodont and acrodont. Here, if you know what is our teeth, then you understand this particular. So that's why I'm showing what is human teeth first of all. That means mammalian. Our teeth are heterodont. Our teeth are thecodont. Human teeth are heterodont. Our teeth are thecodont. Do any one of you know that four types of teeth in human being? The four types. Premolars. Very good. Canines and incisors. Incisors, canines, premolars, and molars. So we have four types of teeth, isn't it? So that is called heterodont. So I think you understand better in fishes, homodont and why they are called homodont. All are same type. Uh, that there is no difference like that. All are the similar kind of teeth. We say homodont type of dentition. Next, what are thecodont? This is our jaw. Our jaw is having some depression. And the teeth are going to be in the depression. I think you people are now aged 16, some 7, 8 years back, you may face at this. If you are one of the teeth, the milk teeth, when they are going and the permanent teeth are coming, in the mean period of time, when you lost your teeth, you may have seen over this kind of depression, isn't it? So that depression I am talking. Teeth present in the sockets of jaw. If the teeth present in the sockets of jaw, we say, we call that as thecodon. So what I am saying, teeth present in the sockets of jaw. Teeth present in the sockets of jaw. We can say thecodon. Okay, so do remember this. Teeth present in the sockets of jaw. If four types of teeth are, four types are present, or many types of teeth are present. If four types of teeth are present, that are present, such kind of dentition is called, such dentition is called heterodont. Heterodont, such kind of dentition is said to be heterodont. Okay, that's not in fishes. That is very important. We are talking about ourselves, human being. Means, when you compare with the top level only, you will understand what kind of primitive issues they have. Isn't it? In that way, I'm saying, okay. So that this topic, as long as we are running, we will compare with the mammals. And when I go to the amphibia, I'll go and back compare with fishes and also I'll go with the coming one. So that's why you need to be a little bit careful. Every day that uh, revision is very important. Okay. So then let's talk about heterodont type of dentition. Teeth are present, various type, four types of teeth are present. We call heterodont. Thecodont type means teeth are present in the sockets of jaw. We can say thecodon. That is in mammals. What about them? Homodon. And uh, here, acrodon. You see here, teeth are just attached. No depression at all. Teeth are just attached to the jaw. No depression at all. So that, what do you say? Acrodon type of dentition. That's a story. Homodon and acrodon. You should remember it as homodon and acrodon type of dentition. Next. So they are showing here that homodont, all the teeth are similar in shape and size. And uh, polyphiodont. To understand this polyphiodont, you should know about the human being. Ours is diphiodont. Do you know what is diphiodont? We are having two types of teeth. Earlier in childhood, we'll have milk tea. And uh, when time, that means when the age is growing, that milk teeth will last and we form that new teeth that we, say, we say permanent teeth. In case these permanent teeth are last over, then you don't get the teeth again. So that means teeth are appeared two times in a lifetime in case of human being in mammal. Our is diphyodon. Now you understand, I think, so what is polyphyodon? Poly means many. Multi -type. Many times. The teeth are going to be formed for Many times we say polyphiodon, homodon, acrodon, and polyphiodon. That's the story of them. 
next exchange of respiratory gases is performed by the gills gills are the respiratory organ heart is two chambered bronchial heart we can say supplies blood only to the gills supplies blood only to the gills it supplies blood only to the gills okay what is the special why i am pronouncing only to the gills for that even let's take the human heart mammalian heart there it will helpful for you to compare at uh, for till the amphibia reptilia is okay so what kind of uh, uh, that heart you have if you if you know that will able to compare so just for that i am giving a brief here that uh, there are four chambers are present in the human heart there are four chambers which we say right atria left atria and right ventricle left ventricle four chambers are present from the no need to remember the technical names because we are going to discuss that full details in the particular uh, the second year Uh, that in human heart but here the you need to know the pattern that's all from the body parts from the body parts there is a blood vessel called superior vena cava and inferior vena cava It is going to collect the blood from the body parts and opens into the right atria from the right atria blood goes to the right ventricle okay and from the right ventricle the blood goes to blood goes to lungs from the right ventricle blood goes to lungs okay that uh, lungs the deoxygenated blood will be supplied to the lungs who is supplying right ventricle okay then after all that capillaries fuse and form through the pulmonary vein the blood will come back to the left atrium then from there the left atria to left ventricle it will come left atria to left ventricle and left ventricle is supplying blood to the body parts that with the help of capillaries okay so whatever it may be here what you need to understand our heart is uh, meant for from the body parts it is collecting i am using the green here to understand much better full pattern from the body parts the blood is coming to the heart and going to the lungs then after again they are coming back to the heart that you need to understand again they are coming back to the heart then to the left ventricle to the body part okay so that means the blood from the body parts came to the heart goes to the lungs then from the lungs it is returned back to the heart then supplied to body part what do you say this as this is very important because the technical terms are no required but you should accept the fact what is there double circulation we can say we can call this feature as double circulation why it is called double circulation you see here that from the body parts to the heart to the lungs again from to the heart that means two times blood is coming to the heart so we call this feature as double circulation and we have four chambered heart now let's talk about the fish heart how does the fish heart is you know there are two chambers in the fish heart in the heart of fish fish heart i am writing otherwise you will confused over that fish heart so from the body parts the blood is collected from the body but only two chambers so from the blood that blood is collected from the body part will come to the heart no right and left will come to the heart to the atria to the ventricle and then supply to the gills gills are the respiratory organ and from the gills it will go to the body parts okay so then i'll i'll make you again to see this particular human being we say from the body parts it will come to the right atria and right ventricle and it goes to the lungs then left atria left ventricle then to the body parts. do you find any difference yes that's the difference is here this is double circulation and here it is single circulation single circulation in case of uh, fishes the single circulation you can see okay so more other interesting features are there so with this you can understand in case that from the body parts whatever the blood is collected which blood that is deoxygenated blood that means here deoxygenated blood 
so in the fish heart deoxygenated blood is present okay next in your language impure blood well, if you remember i am not using that kind of word impure and pure we should not use we should use the technical name we don't join in intermediate your 10th uh, uh, holidays are over now this we have to use this kind of technical term deoxygenated blood so deoxygenated blood will be supplied to the gill there they become oxygenated and that directly going to the body part so in that way we can say the fish heart is venous heart the heart of fish can be called as venous heart why why the fish heart is called venous heart it contain only deoxygenated blood have you seen that it contain only deoxygenated blood that's why the fish heart is called venous heart okay next only one time that in case of human being going to the heart coming to the heart lungs and back again to the heart that's why we call double circulation so what do you have to say here single circulation okay single circulation we can say so that's it uh, that to be remembered over single circulation and uh, this is very famous fish heart is called venous heart why because it contain only deoxygenated blood it contain only deoxygenated blood so that's it that's the story of uh, fishes here let me show you once as i said to that why it is called branchial heart again one more why it is called branchial heart why because the fish heart supplying blood to only gills isn't it only to the gills gills are supplying blood to the body parts so that's it from the body parts the deoxygenated blood comes to the heart and then goes to the gill so that's why we call single circulation and we call the venous heart and we call branchial heart okay we say it as branchial heart so it supplies blood only to the gills and the circulation is single circulation why as blood reaches the heart only once in the course of its circulation making the heart a venous heart heart receive only venous that means deoxygenated blood from the body parts single circuit heart ours is double circuit heart isn't it by comparison only we can understand this that's why i am saying mammals So at least you will get an advantage when we go to the mammals. Nothing to learn because every every character we are comparing with mammals are human general characters, isn't it? And next, the kidneys are mesonephric. Kidneys are mesonephric. Earlier in cyclostomata we said cephalocardia, we said pronephric, isn't it? Then after in fishes we came to know mesonephric kidney and in cyclostomata also. Ammonotelic animals and some are ureotelic animals. those animals were going to excrete ammonia as an excretory waste we say ammonotelic animal that is in the bony fishes aspicts and uh, those who are excreting urea as an uh, excretory material we call them as ureotelic animal we say them as ureotelic animal okay so ammonotelic animals ammonia excreting animals ureotelic animal urea excreting urea excreting is cartilaginous fishes chondrichthyes next cranial nerves are 10 pair human having mammals are having 12 pair olfactory optic oculomotor trochlear trigeminal abducens facial auditory glossopharyngeal vagus spinal accessory hypoglossia we have 12 pair but in case of fishes in case of amphibians most reptiles most mean snakes that uh, are having 10 pair of cranial nerves manings primitiva is the only meanings enveloping the central nervous system that means talking about the brain if we take the human brain mammalian brain the mammalian brain is having three layers dura mater pia mater arachnoid mater there are three layers dura mater pia mater arachnoid mater okay so the brain is surrounded by three layers if this is the brain dura mater pia mater and arachnoid mater okay so here are three meninges meninges we say three meninges are present in mammals but they have only one manings primitiva fish brain is surrounded by if this is the fish brain only 
one layer present that's what about manings primitive or having one layer around the brain is it the what do you say primitive characteristic feature okay so manings primitive next internal ear consists of three semi circular canal lateral line sensory system is present for what to detect the movement and vibration in the surrounding water is well developed lateral line sense organs if you take the fish here that uh, the fish is having this kind lateral line sense organs we can say lateral line sense organs that even i said to you earlier that when you put your finger in aquarium fish won't see you but it will move from there why because that uh, these lateral line sensory system uh, that uh, it detect the movement and vibration in the surrounding water which is very developed eyes are without eyelids eyes are without eyelids here these are eyes without eyelids eyelids i think you know power we have eyelids and each eyeball is protected by a transparent membrane called nictitating membrane nictitating membrane a transparent membrane said to be nictitating membrane unisexual animal sexes are separate fertilization fertilization is internal internal fertilization or sometimes external what i mean cartilaginous fishes internal bony fishes external we'll see the difference development development is direct development no larval form will find okay some very few are having indirect larval form so pisces are having two extant classes two extant classes chondrichthys and asthics cartilaginous fishes we call chondrichthys bony fishes we say astichthys cartilaginous and bony fishes the classes the class chondrichthys class chondrichthys cartilaginous fishes we have to say so for that you just remember our shark in mind okay so let me change the color shark so that means you will find that this kind of wait wait model fin we have to show some difference shark fish like this jara sanna gaya natu jara no problem sanna fish diving fish chondrus cartilage ichthyos fish that means you need to understand that mouth is ventral in position heterocercal caudal fin we have to say what is heter circle what is homo circle that we have to discuss then marine fishes they are chondrichthys are said to be marine fishes which possess cartilaginous endoskeleton that means for our understanding i am saying what is your endoskeleton bone so my endoskeleton is bony bony endoskeleton but shark fishes the cartilaginous fishes are having that endoskeleton as cartilage so then caudal fin is heterocercal asymmetrical both externally and internally that for that only caudal fin i am showing here that you can understand this is a caudal fin you see the two lobes are unequal in size we say that uh, heterocercal caudal fin heterocercal caudal fin okay then here based on the vertebral column entry uh, that you can say that vertebral column where it enters we can say that internal lobes also I, i'll show you for easy recognition for easy recognition i am showing you uh, a and b okay so 1 and 2 what 1 and 2 represents 1 and 2 external lobes i am writing that you just take the screenshot after writing external lobes external lobes are unequal one and two just shown over external lobes are one unequal okay next a and b a and b so what a and b saying internal lobes are also unequal internal lobes are also unequal we say such kind of caudal fin as heterocercal caudal fin external lobes are unequal internal lobes are unequal and uh, to need to say about vertebral column vertebral column that is the third point 
vertebral column reaches to the upper lobe vertebral column vertebral column goes to upper lobe so that's it vertebral column yeah we have small spell spell mistake yeah vertebral column goes to upper lobe just take the screenshot definition for heterocircle circle caudal fin heterocircle circle caudal fin that two three point external lobes are unequal see that external lobes one and two unequal internal lobes are also unequal okay then why internal lobes are unequal vertebral column goes to upper lobe so heterocircle caudal fin characteristic feature that is i hope you have taken the screenshot now i am moving and uh, let me clear the drawings so heterocircle caudal fin you see here these are the uh, heterocircle tail and the skin is covered by dermal flacoid scales which are also called dermal denticle teeth like outside that mouth is ventral and uh, the scales are flacoid skin is covered by dermal flacoid scales so mouth you can see their mouth is ventral in position teeth are modified flacoid scale which are backwardly directed the teeth that over the teeth homodont type of teeth which are they have they are modified flacoid scales which are backwardly directed backwardly directed means they are like this backwardly directed okay inside the teeth inside the body in the shark face you may have seen over in so movies so many movies that uh, the teeth of shark which is very dangerous animal okay the sharks are highly predaceous that's what we are talking highly predaceous we have so many movies on the sharks isn't it the respiratory gaseous exchange is performed by the five to seven lamellae form gills plate like gills we can say lamellae form gills without operculum on each side operculum is a cover actually that on the gill cover gills you can't see because of this because they are covered they cover the gills but this upper cilium is absent in them okay five to seven lamellae form gills without upper cilium on each side then air bladder which is very 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 important air bladder is absent so what is the advantage of the air bladder if you know you can understand the absence of air bladder can make what air bladder that is there in the name air bladder okay so when a fish is having these kind of air bladder swim bladder we also say in the body like air bags in the body okay if air bladder is present that uh, the fish uh, can float that means easily uh, they can float easily in the water at desired level but uh, for example do you have air bladder no if i throw you in the water what you have to do to float you have to swim isn't it so that means what we are saying here these the shark fishes cartilaginous fishes they don't have air bladder so that's why they have to swim continuously constantly they have to swim to avoid, to avoid sinking okay but bony fishes are having air bladder they act as a hydrostatic organ helping the fish float easily at the desired level without much expenditure of energy you just imagine yourself if i throw you or if you jump with your will into the water if you don't know swimming that means if we are uh, not paying energy so what happens to you you will sink down isn't it likewise the shark fishes also that means they don't have air bladder so that's why they have to swim continuously to not to sink into the water and the air bladder uh, is having uh, that uh, we call say we even call it a swim bladder air bladder or swim bladder where there a weberian acicle is present no 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 need actually cartilaginous species are ureotelic and store urea in their blood to maintain osmotic concentration of the body fluid we call it as physiological uremia actually these species are having a bigger problem marine water species isn't it all the species are marine water shark species cartilaginous species what's the problem there uh, that the concentration of the water this is ocean marine water isn't it salt water the concentration of the ocean is little more the concentration of the ocean is more so that's why 
there is a problem of uh, uh, that uh, water of the body is may go out what do you call exasmosis that means outer concentration is more and body concentration is less that's why water may go out so avoid that that uh, they store urea in the blood to make uh, uh, their concentration heavy which to be equal to the outer environment we discuss more in ecology but a primary level i'm saying to maintain the equal concentration to outside they are going to store urea they are going to store urea so what do you call that condition as physiological uremia okay so that's why we used to say that shark fishes are not edible they can't be eatable because they give foul smell nowadays people are eating everything but they are not edible so why because they store urea you just imagine our urine also contain urea in the same way this body itself totally contain urea that what you call condition uh, uh, uremia physiological uremia why they have body fluids blood the tissues are having ure urea to maintain the equal concentration with the surrounding environment otherwise they lose water from the body because they are living in marine water isn't it high concentration salty fluid marine water so that's why the physiological uremia is a condition in males pelvic fin bear the claspers to facilitate the internal fertilization claspers here it is the location you can see here the claspers are present that uh, they are that to facilitate the internal fertilization male copulatory organs we can say between the pelvic fins so they are mostly viviparous they lay egg ones they are mostly viviparous examples we'll go with the examples here scoliodon dog fish we say scoliodon is said to be dog fish pristis sawfish you see this area that saw look like saw i am showing that detail the mouth anterior portion look like saw that's why it is called sawfish carcharodon great white shark carcharodon is called great white shark the cites are trigon sting ray we used to say they possess poisonous sting the cites trigon sting ray possess poisonous sting sarpedo electric ray that it contain electric organ modified dorsal muscles as a, uh, can produce electricity dorsal muscles are modified into electric organs when any predator comes to eat this particular fish it gives electric shock spirna spirna jaygena hammer headed shark spirna hammer headed shark so these are the all of them that once we will take a look on them scoliodon indian dog fish we say pristis sawfish carcharodon great white shark carcharodon great white shark torpedo electric ray torpedo this one electric ray the spirna that spirna hammer headed shark so that's it these are all the examples here so before we go there let us revise the examples of this particular uh, that shark fish as i said to you we'll make our own mind map that to uh, that the mind map not to be no need to be that should be artistic just that should resemble the characteristic features and uh, it makes us that that means properties of the mind map i am talking about that should resemble like and we are not going to draw this in examination to scare the examiner it's just for our sake okay so now uh, let me see let me see so I, i will try to make some visuals here okay so i will just i'll go with the num through numbers number 1 ventral mouth very good mouth is ventral mouth is ventral next uh, yeah number 2 means directly went there number 2 placoid scales body is covered with placoid scales that is related to this particular point that's why i said uh, immediately that point 
okay the clockwise scales and this is will will make it uh, number 3 number three. the teeth of this particular uh, shark fishes is believed to be modified clockwise uh, scale here i use uh, i'll use another color and i am i'm just showing showing a particular area and putting into mark that is number 4 point number 4 upper kilum gill cover is absent upper kilum or gill cover is absent next a bladder like structure i drawn that is point number 5 uh, can you say something here swim bladder yeah air bladder or swim bladder is absent we need to write the continuation continuation air bladder or swim bladder is absent that's why organism need to swim continuously again as the water current otherwise it will sink expenditure of energy for to float not to sink down next i am putting c under the cordon yes 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 cartilaginous endoskeleton is cartilaginous yeah. okay now uh, okay paid and unpaid is a characteristic of fishes and no need to write for uh, uh, this i am writing only for chondrichthys because chondrichthys and osteichthys are going to be very famous for us in examination cartilaginous fishes we used to see chondrichthys so i am writing only for chondrichthys cartilaginous fishes only okay cartilaginous fishes ha ah, then okay 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 oh, the pelvic fin here i think i have to draw uh, the claspers male copulatory organ claspers are present for what for internal fertilization next point number 8 here we caudal fins mm. what type of caudal fin it is heterosaurus caudal fin heterosaurus caudal fin which means external lobes are unequal internal lobes are also unequal vertebral column is going to the upper lobe so that's it this is the diagram major characteristic features are represented here so let's go with that uh, particular character that uh, let me save the on the screen the diagram will be as usual it present now let's try to match this for uh, the given characteristic features so if any there will write the uh, marine fishes these are that is the point we can't write that means we can't draw ocean that you make it like this m marine on the top when photograph is appeared in the mind m also appear so caudal fin is heterocircal that both externally and internally we made out that point the caudal fin is heterocircal heterocircal caudal fin skin is covered by dermal plocoid scales or dermal denticles we can see that is the point which i shown here point number 2 i just shown there teeth are modified plocoid scale which are backwardly directed after two i have to come here this is the only problem that means scales and the teeth are related each other and sharks are highly predaceous i think i drawn that uh, that means uh, it look like uh, dangerous isn't it not like that okay you draw it predaceous predaceous who don't know that uh, they are predaceous movies have given enough knowledge respiratory gaseous exchange is performed by the 5 to 7 lamellae form gills okay this we are not uh, represented here only upper kilum we made we do one thing okay we'll give an additional point here upper kilum is absent and uh, uh, that 5 uh, to 7 pairs of gills we attach to the fourth one itself air bladder air bladder is absent fifth point we have made it out air bladder is absent followed by point i think you will get easily why what is that followed by point for air bladder or swim bladder that it has to swim continuously to float in the water like next cartilaginous fishes are ureotelic yeah that's a kidney wise i'll draw a kidney like mesonephric and uh, ureotelic both will come Okay, mesonephric and ureotelic. Point number nine. Mesonephric and ureotelic. Okay, we'll make it now eight. And I am showing that uh, heterocircle caudal fin nine. Physiological uremia. That's the point you have to make uh, here. You need to write here. Erasing this. Yeah, nine. Eight. 
So I'm making this eight and this will make it nine. Oh God. Nine. Okay, next. In male, pelvic pin bear claspers to facilitate the internal fertilization, this area. Next, pelvic pin bear claspers, internal fertilization. VV paras, that also we'll write here, V outside. There are VV paras, then after the examples. Okay, so the scolionon, dogfish, prestige, sawfish, and uh, the carcarodon, great white shark, and dacitis are trigon, stingray, possess poisonous sting, and torpedo, electric ray, dorsal muscles are modified into electric argon, and spirna, spirna zegena, hammer headed shark. These are the examples, and this is the mind map. Is ready for you? I'm not going to say to take a screenshot of this. You can make your own, isn't it? You have to make your own, your adjustment. So where to be, where not to be, how you remember, that's all your problem. That with that, you can understand. Okay. But how to practice that, I can say. How to practice. That read the text once, close the text book, come here, you try to recognize this particular point. Number one, mouth is ventral. Number two, the scales are plocoid. Number three, some of the modified plocoid scales are backwardly directed, modified into teeth. Number four, that uh, the gills are present, upper chelum is absent, gills are present. Then number five, air bladder is present, which means to float again as the water. Uh, air, sorry, air bladder is absent. This is not a bony fish, isn't it? Air bladder is absent. That means it has to swim continuously to float in the water. It has to swim continuously to float in the water. Air bladder absent. Next, number six. Endoskeleton is cartilaginous. Number seven, pelvic fin bear claspers, male bear claspers for internal fertilization. Eight, ureotelic animal. And a store urea, physiological uremia. Nine, heterocircle caudal fin. External loops are unequal, internal loops are unequal, and vertebral column goes to the upper lobe. So these are the characteristic features. Okay, so make your own, make your own. Now I am going with astictis, the bony fishes, astictis. We have completed chondritis, now we are moving with astictis. So he actually no need to pay much effort, they are contrast points. We said they are in cartilaginous fishes, heterocircle, cardinal fin. Now we are saying here homocircle, mostly homocircle, some are having difficircle, cardinal fin. Cardinal fin is homocircle. I'll show you in the diagram how to be homocircle. So uh, that uh, external loop, same, same like one and two, we have to make one and two. External loops are equal ex that, uh, externally. Next, internal loops, we have to go for that, need to see the vertebral column. Vertebral column goes to the upper lobe end. So that's why what you can say, Internal loops are unequal. Vertebral column goes to the upper lobe. So, before you take the screenshot of this, let me write. External loops are equal. One and two. External loops are equal. That's why we call homo circle. Next, here, what about this? Internal loops are unequal. Internal loops are unequal. Okay, next, this third one. What's that? Vertebral column. Vertebral column goes to the upper low. Vertebral column goes to the upper low. Let me write small letters. Vertebral column is goes to upper low. That's why internal lobes are unequal. If you recall the heterocircle cardinal fin, that uh, same here, heterocircle, cardinal fin, internal lobes are unequal, but only difference here, external lobes are equal. In this, in case, 
Homo circle cardal fin. We used to say these kind of cardal fins as Homo circle cardal fin. I request you to take the screenshot. Homo circle cardal fin. Cardal fin is Homo circle. Symmetrical externally, asymmetrical internally. That's what I wrote in the form of external loops are equal, internal loops are unequal. That uh, the what do you call that? That kind we say Homo circle cardal fin. So taking the screenshot now, I am showing the head the cardal fin. That's it. These are the fins. You see that you now when fishes are when you go to the market, fish market, you just watch this. Most of the time, we'll find homo circle cardal fin. Why? Because that uh, the hetero circle one is there in marine water fisher, isn't it? So that's why you don't find them. Okay. Uh, that we missed a small point here. Uh, in lung fishes and latimeria, actually this uh, this uh, line uh, here after that we have to continue. Lung fishes and latimeria, they have diffy circle caudal fin. Particularly in them, diffy circle caudal fin. Caudal fin is homo circle, except in the word is not mentioned there. That's all. The word is not mentioned, except in lung fishes and latimeria. We don't have in syllabus, but I'll show you what is diffy circle. Very interesting. Diffy circle. In case of diffy circle caudal fin, the external loops are unequal and internal loops are equal. Vertebral column, let me change color. Vertebral column is exactly in the center. Just for information, one and two external loops are equal. A and B internal loops are equal. Vertebral column is exactly in the center because such kind of cardal fins are diffy circle cardal fin and diffy circle cardal fin is observed in the lung fishes and latimeria. Latimeria or silicon fish. Latimeria chalumne. Okay. Diffy circle cardal fin. Just for information, mostly bony fishes are having that uh, homo circle cardal fin like katla, katla, labia rohita, sirihina mrugala, whatever the fishes available in the market. All they have that means eating your fishes, I am saying. Katla, katla. We use it to say Krishna Bhutchi. Uh, that uh, Rohu, Mrugal. Okay. I think you may have seen over the fishes only in the plate. The bony endoskeleton. That, uh, that particular uh, scales are going to be in our silicon fishes, special scales, cosmoid scales. The remaining are going to be ganoid or cycloid or tenoid. Cycloid, ganoid, tenoid. Then very rare cosmoid scales are also appear. Exoskeleton we see in the form of scales. Okay, next uh, the mouth is usually terminal. Terminal mouth. Mouth is usually terminal. Respiratory gaseous exchange performed by the four filamentous gills, if you remember, we said lamellae form gills in cartilaginous fishes, in chondrichthys, lamellae form gills. Here in astrichthys, filamentous gills covered by an upper kilum on each side. Gills. So this is the upper kilum, which is open. There you can see the gills. That means gills are covered by upper kilum. An air bladder is present in, in case of chondrichthys. We said air bladder is absent. That air bladder is present with or without connection to the gut. Next, the swim bladder, air bladder. You can see there. They have that air bladder. So it is either helpful in gas exchange, air bladder we are talking, air bladder will be for gaseous exchange in lung fishes. They, they are air breathing also. They can do in extreme conditions. Lung fissure zip mark. So it maintains the buoyancy. It's a major function, which we discussed earlier. The hydrostatic function in most of the rapin fissure. No need to swim. That they can stay uh, easily. So see that. Any fish, now any market fair that when you go to the market, you can see these kind of uh, air bag you can see inside. You should not say air bag, the swim bladder, or air bladder, which contain a valve even sometimes. A very anasical we use it to see. So this is a gill. Gill you can't see directly, that is closed by upper kilum. Then ammonotelic, excretory material is ammonia. 
monotelic we can say sexes are separate unisexual animals we can say fertilization is external in water fertilization occurs in the water most farms are oviparous carp that in case of shark they are viviparous we say now go with let's go with the examples exocetus flying fish hippocampus sea horse male has a brood pouch hippocampus sea horse that uh, the male has a brood pouch have you seen this brood pouch here the male is having parental care that means here in the brood pouch eggs uh, hatching eggs are going to be stayed over not in the female female lay the eggs and male protect the eggs that is the speciality and one more speciality of this particular fish hippocampus this is the only fish which will move vertically this is the only fish which moves vertical very costly uh, and then aquarium aquarium no, there is no actually people don't use in aquarium but that uh, in uh, when it is used over it is very costly okay that means maintenance also very important their ph maintenance if any small change in ph that fish will die so that's why they don't use as an aquarium but i have seen somewhere when they used in aquarium very uh, interesting in the aquarium if it is present okay our pen size it is it will move like this you see any fish will move like this horizontal isn't it but this fish move vertical you remember the name hippocampus and parental care it is so famous katla katla krishna pochi that means you used to eat more here most of the time you might have eaten over i am sorry vegetarian Lebio, Lebio, Lebio Rohita, commonly called Rohu. Clarius batracus, Macher, we used to say catfish, prohibited in Telangana. Very dangerous fish that is, is spreading many diseases. Betas splendens, Siamese fighting fish. See on the photograph, when a predator, when an enemy in front, it will show like this the fins will be much expanded that's why we use it to say siamese fighting fish betta splendens and uh, the tirophilum angel fish most of the time aquarium you can see these kind of fishes angel fishes echinis sucker fish very interesting fish it has a dorsal fin which modified into sucker and uh, 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 that with the help of the sucker this echinis it attaches to the uh, shark fishes. You know, shark fish are much larger. So, with the help of dorsal fin modified into sucker, it has sucker on the exactly on the hip above the head. So, with that sucker, it attaches to the shark fish. So, so that's all. Means when shark fish is moving, it also free travel, free journey. Then, when shark fish is eating, if any food particles are dropped down, it will eat. So, that means simply ectoparasite. On the picture, so that is the speciality of uh, echinis, marine fish. That is echinis. They don't find here and fresh water. So these are the examples. Let me say once again, exocetus, flying fish, flying fish. You don't uh, see in the air. For when I say flying fish, so the, what I mean, gliding, gliding. When fish jumps, because of this uh, uh, gliders, that you know, that means I'm not saying flying means uh, we have a flying frog also. They have a flying lizard. They don't fly, they glide. You have to understand, they glide. Means when they jump, they, uh, that they are in water, when they jump, they slowly drop down into the water. The glide, we can say, they glide. Do you know gliders, paragliders? So gliders, they don't make fly, just these particular gliding-like structures which help them to be air for a period of time. Okay, so hippocampus, uh, that sea horse, we say male has a brood pouch, parental care seen in the male, betta splendid, Siamese fighting fish, katla katla, that katla, common name, labio rohita, sirihina mrugala, these three are the Indian major cows. One, two is given, third is not given. Sirihina mrugala, labio rohita, katla, 90% of the fishes eaten by, uh, that in India of these three, katla katla, labio rohita, sirihina mrugala, Indian major cows, we use it to say. Carp fishes. Okay, then labio rohu, we can say. Clarius, catfish, macro. Next, uh, tirophilum, angel fish. It's an aquarium fish. Echinis, sucker fish. So that's it. These are the examples for the bony fishes. And mind map. Mind map for the bony fishes.
the same features where whatever we covered there there are here also the same number 1 now is it what ventral mouth mouth is ventral mouth is terminal in case of shark fishes contract is mouth is ventral here terminal okay these are the eyes nothing to say about them yeah about this point number 2 Point number two: the gills are present, and gills are covered by what? Uh, what gills are present? Filiform gills are present. Okay, here only we'll write F O of the filiform gills are present, and gills are covered by upper cilium. Mostly, you people are confusing here. Okay, next the scales. Scales. So directly, I'm writing here that uh, plocoid scales we said in chondrite is cycloid, tenoid. Ganoid, cycloid. See, uh, we'll show you. Cycloid scales, tenoid scales. See, silent in tenoid. Ganoid scales, and rarely casmoid scales. See, so cycloid, tenoid, ganoid, and casmoid scale. Rarely casmoid scale. Pelican fishes are having casmoid scale. Uh, next, this is point number three. Scales we say. Inka, do you help me? Ready to help me? Yeah, well, we have to show air bladder here. Air, air bladder. bladder is present. Fourth point, air bladder. You adjust yourself while making. You should draw like me. No, no need exactly. So, uh, air bladder is present. Okay, Inka. Condyle fin is homoceral. Yes, Amma. Homo circle. Okay, homo Condyle fin. Homo circle, caudal fin, caudal fin. Caudal fin is homo circle caudal fin. That let me show you homo circle. That uh, that means external lobes and internal lobes are equal, and uh, the vertebral column vertebral column goes to the upper lobe. That's why internal lobes are unequal. That all will write as a single point. All will write as a single point. Okay, so let me show you from the beginning. Caudal fin. We have to say caudal fin here on what plastic teeth. We say bony fishes. Kada. So that is one of the point we have to say that I'll draw a bone here. That to understand much better. There we made C. Here already so many C's are present. So that's why I'll draw a bone. That fifth point. Fifth point. Fifth. That bony endoskeleton is present. Caudal fin is homo circle. Caudal fin is homo circle. That means external lobes are equal, internal lobes are unequal. Vertebral column goes to the upper lobe. Next, exoskeleton is in the form of scale, cycloid, tenoid, ganoid, casmoid. Scales. Next, mouth is usually terminal. We covered. Mouth is usually terminal. Respiratory gas is exchanged, performed by filamentous gills, and covered by upper cilium on each side. Next, air bladder present with or without connection to the gut. It is either helpful in gaseous exchange. It is air bladder to float actually. In lung fishes, it is for gaseous exchange. Or maintaining buoyancy, hydrostatic function. Next, ammonotely means here we need to draw a kidney and a. That is sixth point. Ammonotely, excretory material is ammonia. Then unisexual animal, male, female are separate. That is the seventh point. Okay, this is eighth one and seventh I am adjusting here. Unisexual, M by F. Male and female are separate. Fertilization external, writing outside. Fertilization external. The most forms are oviparous. We'll draw some eggs. There also actually should draw some sharks, small sharks, very parasitic. So that's it with examples. Let me say again, exocetus, flying fish, hippocampus, half the fish, we say, sea hawks. Then male has parental care, cutla, cutla, that uh, cutla commonly called, labio rohita, commonly called rohus. Then clarius batracus, clarius maghur, we can say commonly. Next, beta splendin, siamese fighting fish. And angel fish, tyrophilum, angel fish. Then echinase, sucker fish. These are the examples with our 
mind map and i request you to take the screenshot okay then comparison between the cartilaginous and bony fissures is very important for us have we taken some erasing yeah now let's close this with some questions these organisms are considered as scavengers lampreys hackfishes branchiostoma amphiaxis hackfishes hackfishes amphifish okay so i i lost this also who is lamprey what is the scientific name of lamprey petromyzon petromyzon very good belongs to cyclostoma very good very good you never disappoint me branchiostoma answer is act which over well i am asking who are the remaining branchiostoma cephalocardata branchiostoma or amphiaxis both are same actually branchiostoma or amphiaxis you have to wait for this that means when you see a, a multiple choice question try to know the remaining also if you do like that if 40 questions are given 160 questions are available to you anadromous migration is seen in anadromous migration is seen in lamprey 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 hackfish are also belongs to cyclostomata but lamprey is answer who is branchiostoma amphiaxis it also cyclostoma again okay i told very good cephalocardata as in males pelvic fin bears dash to help internal fertilization Yes, claspers. Claspers. Is cloaca scales. Claspers. Claspers. In whom? In cartilaginous fishes or bony fishes? Cartilaginous. Cartilaginous fishes. Cartilaginous fishes. Cartilaginous fishes. Cartilaginous fishes are having this internal fertilization. Skin of chondrichthys is covered by. Thinoid. Dermal plaque. Dermal plaque. Dermal plaque. Remaining all are going to be. Uh, that uh, astic this ventral cycloid tenoid gonoid and casmoid so that's it that is the differences between the chondrichthys and astictis you should frame the table that means differences between the chondrichthys and astictis and make your own mind map and frame the table then only it will uh, that it will be stabilized over okay so that means after listening people will get short term memory but when you practice it in my way whatever i said that short term memory will be turned into long term memory you never need the revision back again just pictures will come in mind whatever the pictures you make that pictures will come in mind so how far you are uh, that you make colorful that much colorful picture will come in mind so that's why i'm saying you are mind map you are not going to draw in examination show your creativity how you draw that's no matter there is no limitation just your creativity so that's why use your creativity and you make my mind map already we said cyclostomata that you have to do 